It's time for the Fast Break Basketball Show with your hosts, Wes Cusswood and Ben Davis. Welcome to this week's episode of the Fast Break Basketball Show. I'm your host, Beth Davis. Well, it was a great win by the Geelong United Supercats women over the Ballarat Miners on Saturday night. The girls winning 84-79 after a close one-point loss to the Ringwood Hawks on Friday night. So they split their weekend one and one. After the game against Ballarat on Saturday night, I caught up with head coach Matthew Payton. Well, I'm here with Matthew Payton, the head coach of the Hoop City Geelong United Supercats women's team after a great win over the Ballarat Miners here at the Geelong Arena tonight, winning by five points. But Matt, I first want to talk about last night's game against Ringwood, a really close game, but going down by one point. How did you feel and what was the outcome of the game after last night's loss? Oh, I think, you know, every game, win or loss, we've got to take something out of it, especially knowing now that we've locked in finals. and. Um, yeah, we, we knew we weren't at our best and we were going to get Ringwood's best shot because they were needing to continue to win games and they're a proud club, obviously defending champions. So, um, you know, they uh, they eked out the, and did what they needed to to get that win. It was a strange game in the end. I don't think there was a stoppage for the last couple of minutes. As coach, uh, that time it means that you relinquish a lot of control back to the players, but um, that also then means that there's there's a couple of extra things that um, we addressed through the, uh, through the week this week at practice and... Um, yeah, we, we did some of that even uh, overnight and it served us well tonight against Ballarat. Well, it certainly did. The scores were even at quarter time, uh, but you guys came out the, in the third quarter. You were leading by 11 points at three-quarter time. Ballarat did push back in that fourth quarter, but certainly that third quarter is where you guys seemed to lock them down. You held Abby Barung to just two points in that third quarter. She did come out and score a lot in the fourth, but that third quarter was really where you seemed to lock down the Miners. Yeah, I mean, she's a, she's a quality player, um, you know, a class act and a great athlete at both ends of the floor. So we knew we weren't going to be able to probably stop her for all four quarters. Um, and, uh, you know, playing a club that's not going to make finals is always dangerous because they're going to come out and throw everything at you with, with reckless abandon and nothing to lose. So, um, you know, we, we did um, manage to make some adjustments in that third quarter. And then uh, probably a bit of our fatigue, you know, we were, uh, we were down a rotation, um, obviously, without uh, Ella Toffiano tonight. So... Um, you know, that, that allowed us, we, we kind of, that, the third quarter gap allowed us to kind of go into a little bit of management in that fourth quarter, albeit they kept coming at us. So, um, yeah, credit to the players stepping up and hitting some huge baskets towards the end there. Well, as you say, we were missing Ella tonight, but fantastic to see Chantel Horvat and Monica Okoye back in the side. A silver, medal for Mon a silver medal for Monica and a bronze medal for, for Chantel. A fantastic performances by them at the FIBA Asia Cup. Yeah, we're, you know, we're very proud of them and, uh, you know, we, um, we watched both of them keenly um, throughout, throughout their uh, Asia Cup campaigns and um, I think even at one stage there was a few little clips of, uh, or even photos of them matching up on each other, which was nice. But, um, you know, they're well and truly on the same page now wearing, uh, you know, Geelong United Supercats colours. And uh, I think, you know, we're just really looking forward to seeing them gel over this next couple of weeks as we head into finals. Well, congratulations again, Matt, on a fantastic win tonight and best of luck next weekend. Thanks, Beth. Well, it was a loss for the men on Friday night against Ringwood as well in a close game and another close loss on Saturday night against the Ballarat Miners here at the Geelong Arena. The final score, 104 to 107. After the game, I caught up with head coach Grant Wallace and players Demarcus Gatlin and Cohen Blythe. I'm here with the head coach of the Hoop City Geelong United Supercats men's team. Grant, a tough weekend for you guys, a close loss against Ringwood last night and then another close loss at home here against the Ballarat Miners tonight. Yes, <laughs> it's tough. Um, I'm shattered for the boys, um, worked so hard. And, I mean, this is our sixth game in three weeks and whether that was a factor, I don't know. Playing last night, uh, you know, we played uh, Ringwood and shot 12% 12 12 from the three-point line and lost by three or four. Um, we just couldn't give up those points early tonight, uh, letting them get out 54 points or whatever at half time. That's not what our, our role or KPI is. But credit to the boys, the way they fought back and got back in front. And, um, well, definitely, as you say, it was a tough first half and Ballarat came out and really shot the ball well from beyond the three-point arc. Um, Adam Thosby and Jack Davidson hitting some really deep threes. Um, but certainly in that second half, and particularly in that last quarter, there was a lot of fight back and, and it really was such a close game in those final minutes. Um, Cohen Blythe coming up with that big play to steal the ball, get the basket and get the unsportsmanlike foul. Without doubt. Uh, it's great for his development. Liam Herbert was really good tonight too. 
Um, so long term we're in good shape, but it's just a matter of the, the here and now that we're uh, struggling with. We had four players tonight that got 20 plus points, um, so at 103 points you don't lose those games if you're playing good D and that's something for us to address and, and little things matter at times. Uh, a couple of missed box outs on foul shots, which is a coach, coach's uh, hatred there. Um, lots of review. We've got, now we've got Keylor at home next weekend and uh, finish up with Waverley. So we'll try and finish off on a high. Well, of course, uh, the loss tonight for the men, but the women won by five points, which means that Geelong United Basketball are the winners of the inaugural Mark Leader Shield. Talk to me a little bit about uh, what that means for the club. You know, Mark Leader, obviously a big part of both uh, Geelong Basketball and Ballarat Basketball, but... Although the men's team lost, the club overall retains that inaugural Mark Leader Shield tonight. It's been a tough week um, as an ex-giant with uh, obviously Cecil passing um, and then with Mark as well. And uh, when I first got the role here um, in Geelong, I got in contact with my coach in 93, which was Mark Leader and an ex-teammate, and wanted him to speak to the team. Now, obviously, he was ill. Um, but his contribution to the sport of basketball throughout Melbourne and in Tassie for a little while, but with the Giants here and Ballarat, uh, just remarkable, what a remarkable family. Um, Pre-season, Jill came and spoke to our boys uh, and mentioned four things that she thought that Mark would pass on to this playing group. That's become our mantra this year. Uh, we refer to it every pre-game, uh, every training session. Uh, so Mark's a big part of us, so it's pretty special for us. Well, Grant, thank you so much for chatting with us. It's always tough after a loss, but as you say, still two more games left in the season and hopefully finishing on a high back here next week. And the crowd, I mean, how good is our home crowd? Um, the atmosphere and even the people hanging around here, the club have done a great job with that side of things and they love the players. Um, we just wish we could reward them with wins. Well, hopefully you can do that next week and we hope to see you back here at the Geelong Arena then. I'm here with Demarcus Gatlin after a close loss to the Ballarat Miners going down by three points. Demarcus, a really tough loss tonight. You guys were trailing at half time, trailing at three quarter time, but really came back in that last quarter. Just couldn't get the job done in those last few minutes. Yeah, we just wanted to leave it all on the floor. Um, that's all we could do. We came out flat in the first half. They hit some tough shots, hit some big shots, um, but we showed a lot of resiliency. Just ran out of time, just a little too late. Well, you yourself had 31 points for the game, another big game for you, but again, 31 points is nice to have, but getting the win is always better. Um, obviously, we know what we're playing for. I think it's like 25 years of um, finals appearances. Um, so I'd much rather have two points and come out with the win than 31 points in the loss. Um, so I've been, I've been for this, with this club for a very long time, and the culture really means something to me now. I definitely embody it. Well, Demarcus, again, a disappointing loss tonight after a hard loss again against Ringwood, but still two more games left to play. So what will you guys do tonight or over the rest of the week to get back, uh, get back your mojo and come back and, and have another two good games next weekend? Just stick together and leave it all on the floor. That's all we can do. Hope for the best. Well, best of luck next week. Um, don't forget our next home game is here next Saturday night, uh, Saturday 15th of July, where you can come and see Demarcus and the rest of the team in the last home game of the regular season. I'm here with Cohen Blythe from the Hoop City Geelong United Supercats after a close loss to the Ballarat Miners, 104 to 107, the final score. Cohen, your play really put you guys back in the game where you got that seal, you got that bucket and then drew the unsportsmanlike foul, but obviously really tough to go down in such a close game like that. Oh yeah, very tough. Those ones definitely hurt, especially late in the season when we need wins. Uh, it was there for us, but you know, that's just how this season's gone. But yeah, tough loss. It was a close game last night against Ringwood as well. Uh, what do you guys talk about after the game last night to try and pick yourselves back up to face Ballarat today? Uh, we did have a good, a very good chat in the locker room last night, uh, which I think was really healthy for our team. Uh, just put everything out on the board. Everyone spoke to each other. Um, so that was a good chat. And I felt like we, we came out and we executed what we talked about last night, but it just wasn't enough. Well, as you say, not enough tonight, but a valiant effort and such a close game. Bad luck on tonight's game, but best of luck next week. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it was First Nations round in NBL 1 South this week, and on Saturday night, Geelong United Basketball partnered with Wathaurong Aboriginal Cooperative to share Aboriginal culture right here on the Geelong Arena Court. There was a welcome to country before the women's game and a welcome to country and smoking ceremony before the men's game, as well as cultural dance performances at halftime of both the men's and women's games. 
Well, on Saturday night, Geelong United Basketball and Ballarat Miners were playing for the Mark Leader Memorial Shield, an inaugural award that is given to the club who wins the most points with the aggregate scores of both the men's and the women's game. So while the Geelong United Supercats lost by three points, the five point win by the women meant that the Mark Leader Memorial Shield stayed here in Geelong for the first year. And after the game, I caught up with Mark's wife, Jill Leader, to talk about what the Shield means and what Mark's legacy is for basketball here in Geelong. Well, I'm here with Jill Leader, wife of the late Mark Leader tonight, who presented the Mark Leader Memorial Shield to the Geelong United Basketball Club, who won over the Ballarat Miners, of course. The women getting a five point min win. The men a three point loss, which means that with aggregate scores, Geelong retain the inaugural Mark Leader Shield. Jill, talk to me a little bit about how this idea came about and how the Mark Leader Shield came to be in existence. Well, it was actually Tom King that approached me a few months ago and he mentioned that the um, Geelong Basketball Association had come up with the idea and uh, yeah, just sort of said to me, this is what we're going to do, would you be interested in presenting it and being part of it and of course I said yes because it was just I just felt it was a really nice way of um, remembering Mark because obviously I mean you've said it tonight the, the list is long of his achievements at both clubs so um, just being able to honour that and also just keep that legacy alive it's been um, something that I think he'd be really proud of and as his family we are too so yeah. Well, I did speak with Grant earlier and obviously Grant knew Mark really well yes. and, and wanted to get him involved when yes. he found out he was going to be coaching yeah. at Geelong. But you were able to come in and talk to the yeah. team at the start of the season yeah. and Grant spoke about how special that was and that the players have really held on to those words that you yeah. said that Mark would want to instill in them. So talk to me a little bit about Mark's legacy, particularly at basketball in Geelong and, and what he has left behind for those next generations of basketball players. Um. One of the things that when Grant reached out to me about doing that, um, it was like a past players day, they were doing the buddying program and everything, was that he was hoping to have Mark as his mentor and buddy through the season because um, Grant played with Mark and also was coached by Mark, so saw both sides of it. And he was, um, you know, he held Mark in really high regard like a lot of basketball people did. And um, he just asked me to come in and say, you know, what do you think Mark would say in this situation? So I I guess I've been around basketball and around where, like I was always around, Mark was always very um, open with allowing me to be, you know, around everything. So I pretty much knew what and how he would say things. So I just sort of spoke about um, the legacy of the club and how, you know, the Supercats and also Corio Bay and how important it was to try to continue the traditions of those clubs and and they've both had incredible success so just to try to remember the people who've been here before you the players and the coaches have been here before you to make this place i mean this has got such history this place i mean it's it's been really cool coming back today after not being here for a few years but there's a great history here and it's really important that grant was trying to make sure that the players now know about that so that they can you know play with that kind of um, pride as well yeah well Jill thank you so much for being here tonight the Mark Leader Memorial Shield is a fantastic way to honor his memory and everyone here at the club again holds Mark in such high regard so thank you to you and your family thank for being you. here tonight thank you so much Thanks. well let's take a look now at how our big V youth league teams fared across this weekend of basketball Well, it was a close loss for the Youth League men on Saturday night as they went down 92 to 97 to the Keysborough Cougars in their away game. Bailey Bruce finished with 25 points and four rebounds. Jack Moran, 21 points and seven rebounds. And Marach Marach had 18 points and 10 rebounds. The men still sit fourth on the ladder with a 13 and six record and two rounds left to play. And it was a hard day at the office for the Nevexa Geelong United Youth League 1 women, losing 37-95 to to the Eltham Wildcats at home in the curtain raiser game before the NBL 1 South teams played on Saturday night. Cassidy Green finished with 16 points, 9 rebounds. Jasmine King, 11 points, 5 rebounds. And Kayla Blasco had 2 points and 12 rebounds in the loss. Geelong United suiting up just five players with many players away on holidays or out with injuries. The girls sit 10th on the ladder with a 4-16 and 16 record and still two rounds left for them to play also. 
The Youth League men will be taking on Hume City in the curtain raiser game for the NBL 1 next Saturday night. Their game starts at 3pm before they head to Eagle Stadium in Wyndham on Sunday afternoon for a double header with the Youth League women also taking on Wyndham. The girls start at 1pm on Sunday with the men's game at 3pm. Well, it was a big night of action here on Saturday night at the Geelong Arena. As well as the games being played, there was a past players and officials function welcoming past Geelong Supercats and cryo-based Stingrays players and officials to share some memories and a drink or two after the game as well. As well as Geelong players, we also had some basketball Ballarat legends in the house and I caught up with Eric Hayes after the game. Well, I'm here one, with one of the legends of Ballarat basketball, Eric Hayes. Eric, it's great to see you back here at the Geelong Arena. Talk to me a little bit about your memories of playing against Geelong when you were playing here. Um, <laughs> oh, look, actually, it's been pretty cool kind of seeing some of the old players. Um, obviously, we had some really nice battles back in the day. Um, game was probably played a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it's just been pretty cool to kind of be back here and see some of the old guys. And like, I love the fact that I see them now and like we used to battle on the floor, but you know, now we can kind of laugh and talk about the old days and have a, have a, have a drink together and, and, a, and a few laughs. So it's good. And uh, speaking of the game tonight, obviously Ballarat men getting the win over Geelong United Supercats tonight, but a very close game. Were you able to, to watch most of the game or were you busy catching up with uh, former teammates? Oh, watched a little bit of it. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I thought Ballarat might get up just because I watched them a little bit online, I guess, and they shoot the ball so well. Um, so I thought if they're shooting well, they're, they're always going to be a chance to win. And, um, they shot the ball well early and got a nice lead and then at the end Geelong made a few mistakes and Ballarat was able to kind of capitalise so yeah, that was a, it was a good, good result for the Ballarat boys. Well I want to talk a little bit about this, this arena, the Geelong Arena and you've obviously played here before as an opposing team player. What is it like for an opposition team to come into an arena like this where the crowds are sell out, the noise is so loud, what is that like for you as an opposition player? Do you love it or is it a little bit intimidating? Well I guess it depends on the person I suppose. I, I, I love playing here, I thought it was pretty good but um, I don't know, like talking to, um, talking to Lock, Lock Arm, Arm Arm, 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 armor, lock, lock, armor. Um, just talk, and actually talking to Nathan Herbert. Just talking about sometimes if you were, if you're a competitor, you love coming into a place like this and and the opportunity to kind of go against a, a quality team and have to deal with the crowd. Like that's just something that kind of, I don't know. You just look forward to that. So uh, it is a tough place to play, but uh, I know back in the day, I, I I loved playing here. I thought it was a really great place to play. Um, but certainly they you know, always had great crowds and like it's a great crowd that understood the game too so uh, no, it was a really good place to play. Well Eric it is great to see you back here welcome back to the Geelong Arena and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. All right. Well it was fantastic to see so many past players, coaches and officials here at the Geelong Arena and after the game I headed upstairs and caught up with some of our past players and coaches including Jason Reardon, Nick Awusu, Leon O'Neill and Adam Lamont. Well we are here at the past players and officials function and I found Jason Reardon a championship player with both the Geelong Supercats and the cryo based Stingrays. Jace, great to see you back here at the Geelong Arena. It's great to be back. It's been probably 15 years since I've been back here, so it's, um, it's really good to catch up with, with, with a lot of people I haven't seen for a long time. Well, tell me a little bit about that because you, know, you, you are still playing in the domestic competition at Geelong, uh, but what's it like being back and catching up with those teammates that you won championships with? Uh, it's funny, we walked in and there was a lot of silver and a lot of bald heads, and um, it, was, it was really good. Uh, and then we watched, obviously, guys like Cohen, who I play with, and Cohen's, Cohen's a star of the future, so it's really good to sit back and watch it. Unfortunately, I've been playing up until now, so I, I hope to get out to a lot more games. And um, yeah, look, the club's a, a brilliant club, so hopefully we can we can move forward and, and go from there. Well, tell me some of your favourite memories of those championship days with both the Supercats and with Cryo Bay. What are some of the best memories that you're allowed to talk about? Uh, look, uh, the the number one thing that stands out to me is, is Mark Leader. He's he's legitimately one of the one of the really amazing people of of basketball who just wants people to succeed. Um, 
and then, and then you look at my my teammates from Supercats days with with Medved and and, and Herbert and uh, Awusu, and then and then I go across the Stingrays and play with Rebula and, and, and Hicks, who was also part of Sting, uh, Supercats days. Like it's just it's just a really good environment to be around. So kids are young now. Hopefully they can be a part of it in the future. Well, as you say, Mark Leader, a very special person to both clubs and to Ballarat as well. And the Mark Leader Shield was presented tonight. Geelong United Basketball coming up with the win. So a really special way to keep his memory alive here in Geelong. Uh, look, Mark, Mark was part of my life for about 14 years. And Kim and I often, uh, often sit there, my wife and I sit there and talk about Mark. He's, he, he's, he was a beautiful person, uh, an amazing coach, and, and forever in our hearts to Jill, Jess and Rach. They're, they're an amazing family. Well, Jason, great to see you, and thanks for being part of the Fast Break Basketball Show. Thank you very much. Well, I'm here with past Supercats player and life member Nick Awusu. Nick, welcome to uh, the past players function. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. <laughs> it's great to see you back at the Geelong Arena. Tell me a little bit about what it's like for you coming back here, because you have been to a couple of games, but it's always good to come back and catch up with your teammates, your former teammates, championship teammates. Yeah, no question. It's, um, it's really nice to, to be here. Um, and uh, you know, in a function room with, with yeah, I guess tens of uh, players that you've played with along the years, and and um, you know, some some really good friends and and family. I guess it feels like um, talking about old times, and uh, yeah, you know, there's there's faces that you haven't seen for years and years. So getting everyone in the same room at the same time is um, is a really good initiative, to be honest. JB coming in there as he always does, but. As he uh, does. <laughs> But Nick, tell me, tell me a little bit about the game tonight. Obviously, it was a tough loss for the men, but you've had some of those losses yourself. What will the team be feeling after a game like that? Yeah, look, it's difficult. I saw, to be honest, I didn't see the whole thing. So I didn't really get a feel for the flow of the game. Um, we're, we're here chatting away and, and talking about past times and, and, and having a, a couple of uh, cold ones. So, But, you know, we picked up the last couple of minutes and uh, the fellas did a, a good job, you know. Um, it, it was kind of edge of seat stuff. Uh, until, you know, I guess Ballarat wrestled, wrestled back momentum. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, you know, I, I, like the, I like the composition of the team. Um, adding the big fella in there, I think it's uh, Matt um, is, is in there in the centre, which is, which is good to see. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, like, I, I, I like where the team's at. So I think they've got the mix to be able to push it in the, in the finals. Well, Nick, thanks for joining us. Go and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Enjoy. Well, I'm here with former player and former coach Leon O'Neill. Leon, great to see you back here at the Geelong Arena. And you guys are celebrating a, a Vic Country Championship tonight as well? Yeah, a reunion. 30 years since, uh, since the state team played together in 1992, 94 was the year. So great to catch up with some guys and girls I haven't seen for a long, long time. And um, the older I get, the better I used to be, <laughs> which is fantastic. And uh, the stories are still funny and some people haven't changed a bit. And, uh, you know, the, these nights are, are why you play team sports, so you can reminisce about the experiences, not the wins and losses, but, you know, the people you meet and the relationship that you form. So, fantastic opportunity. Well, I should say, you've got your Vic Country teammates here from 30 years ago, but plenty of past players and officials here from Cryo Bay and from Geelong Supercats. Tell me a little bit about what your, some of your fondest memories are of playing here at the Geelong Arena, coaching here at the Geelong Arena as well. Oh, just the people. I mean, the, the place is so loud and so... Um, such a great place to play sport it's just almost it's purpose built i don't know if it is or it isn't but it certainly seems like it's purpose built to just make a great environment to play um, so as a player i used to feed off the crowd and uh, uh, and really enjoyed that that energy that they gave you and uh, whether you're on the court or on the bench it made no difference it was just an amazing amazing place to play and especially as a younger player when i played here it was a, a big part of who i was as a basketball and what i did um, as a coach, you know, that was some of, uh, some of my fondest memories were coming from behind and um, having the crowd, you know, will us over the line, almost like happened tonight. Um, it brought back some fond memories and, you know, it goes to show that basketball Geelong is, um, you know, is continuing to head in the right direction, which is great to see. But, um, yeah, for me, the relationships that I made and uh, was able to be a part of, like seeing Herbie and Nick Owusu here and Adam Lamont and Damien Armore and... Um, you know, Tamba and Pat Monane and these guys that have been a part of the fabric of Geelong basketball for such a long time. And even the Ballarat people who you know, are a country club an hour down the road, you just know the Grillowitzes and the Actor Houses and, you know, Tuddies over there and all these, Eric Hayes, all the faces that you 
played with, played against, had good rivalry with, but could have a laugh after the game. It just continues. So for me, that's heartening and you know, continues to show the basketball's in a great position in Geelong. Well, Leon, thank you so much for the time and enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, Beth. Appreciate it. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Fast Break Basketball Show. And don't forget, the Geelong United Supercats will return here to the Geelong Arena this Saturday, 15th of July. Games have been selling out all year, so you do not want to miss it. Get your tickets online now.